We're all guilty of doing this, and I'm willing to bet that you're probably doing it right now. You're probably not investing a lot of money or resources in finding a decent tripod. And now that you're getting serious, well, it's coming back to bite you in the butt. So let's talk about some tripods. We all start off with the really cheap tripods. We buy the best camera we can get, we'll invest in lighting and sound, but there's secondary accessories that you really need to get. Light stands, tripods, and so forth. And you don't really realize how important a tripod is until you become a little bit more mobile and you start shooting more videos. So that's what I'm trying to do with this video here. I went through all of that right now I'm in the intermediate pro phase of tripods, and I wanna to suggest to you guys my two favorites, my heavy duty favorite and my light travel favorite. Now, full disclosure, both of them are made by Small Rig, but Small Rig has nothing to do with this video. They did not contact me, they didn't give me the tripods. I bought the tripods with my own money. I've been using them for a long time. I'm gonna get into why I love these tripods, and then I'm also gonna suggest a middle ground made by newer. So the budget friendly tripods, they sound great at first, right? They're about 20 bucks, maybe 30 bucks. And they might have some really cool features like a pistol grip head, like the one I'm showing right now, but they quickly start failing. They're made out of plastic. They can't really handle a good payload. Let's start off with my travel tripod or my lightweight tripod. And this tripod, I probably use like 80% of the time for all my YouTube videos, for everything that you see basically on my YouTube channel, except for short videos and client work. For that stuff, I'm usually using my cinema camera, which is pretty heavy. And I need my heavy duty tripod, which we'll talk about next. Okay, so this tripod's made by Small Rig and it's their 71 inch model. It's made out of aluminum, so it is lightweight, but not quite as lightweight as carbon fiber would be, but you're still gonna feel a huge difference. It comes with a 360 degree ball head, which isn't the best, and I got rid of it. I have a better fluid video head that I'm gonna recommend in just a minute. It has a payload of 33 pounds, and it's adjustable from 16 inches all the way up to 71 inches, so it's gonna cover pretty good range as far as height is concerned. It is two in one. You can use it as a monopod. I never use it as a monopod. It's just not my style, but you do have that option. Now I'm not gonna go over all the features. I'll just put a link in the description below of all the tripods that I'm recommending if you wanna buy them yourself. They are affiliate links. So if you do decide to click on them, I do get a very small percentage that helps out the channel. What I love about this tripod is not only is it light and it folds up into a really small package, it comes with a great bag, but also it's sturdy. It's pretty well made. The price is really good. It comes in at $70. There are some plastic pieces, but the corners that are being cut are not critical. The areas that are plastic, mainly the legs, the little locking tab mechanisms are plastic. The folding mechanisms are steel though. Everything that matters is steel. So Small Rig does a really good job of maintaining the quality where it's needed. Now let's talk about the head. I'm not a big fan of ball heads for video purposes. I like fluid heads, but if you wanna use it for photography, keep it on the side, it's still usable just not for a video in my opinion. But there is a head that I highly recommend that you guys should buy and it goes great with this travel tripod. And it's conveniently called the Small Rig Video Head for Vertical and Horizontal Shooting Tripod. It has a pretty decent fluid head for panning and tilting and it also has a handle that can be extended out or completely removed. But the best part about this fluid head is its versatility. With just a push of a button, you can easily switch into vertical mode for social media shooting like TikTok or Instagram and so forth, which is getting increasingly more popular. And then it also has another button that helps you rotate the camera. So if you're trying to get a different rotation and then maybe you wanna go vertical or whatever, there's many ways you can change the orientation of the camera. It does accept Arca Swiss and the payload on the head, I think is something like five pounds. And I think it's like 11 or 10 pounds for a camcorder. So it's not the greatest payload. It's definitely made for mirrorless cameras. Again, it's a travel fluid head that's designed for 
travel tripods. So you're not going to put like the Ronin 4D cinema camera on there. It's just way too heavy for this head and the tripod. But you can see the value when it's paired with a good aluminum travel tripod. And you don't have to go with small rig as far as the tripod itself. You can get this fluid head and put on whatever travel tripod that you want. I really think it's worth it. The panning and tilt motions are pretty good, but not a thousand fifteen hundred dollar tripod level you got to remember we're still in that intermediate phase and then you can afford a fifteen two thousand dollar tripod but for travel purposes the fluid head's really really good you do get a little bit of binding especially when you're at a weird counterweight now with my sony a7s3 if i remove the cage and you know remove a lot of the weight it's not too bad the binding's pretty reduced, it's not as noticeable, but there are times when I feel like I can kind of feel it about to bind. It's very subtle, but I, you know, I can feel it. So what I end up trying to do is I'll hit record, start my motion ahead of time to get out of that bind, and then everything's fluid. So out of the gate, there might be a little bit of a bind, but once you get going, it's really, really fluid. This head's kind of expensive though. It comes in at $100. There are deals though. I got the head on sale for $69 and the tripod was on sale for $59. Overall, I thought that was a steal. So there are times when there's the coupon with Amazon, just make sure you click on the coupon and you'll get it for a really good price. So I highly recommend put them both on your watch list, put a tracker on them, whatever you gotta do and wait for that discount. Cause when it does drop, it's a no brainer. And trust me, I've been using it for a long time. I really, really love this setup. Okay, now on to my heavy duty tripod. It's the small rig AD01 fluid head tripod. I got the complete package with the head and the tripod. The head's pretty good for the price that you're getting everything at, which comes in at $168 with a $9 coupon on Amazon currently. So let's call it 160. You're definitely stepping up. You can buy fluid heads alone that are like five, 600 bucks, but it's really good. I'm always using my Ronin 4D on this fluid head tripod. It's still lighter than a fully rigged out whatever cinema camera, but it's pretty heavy. It handles it like a champ, no problems. You're still gonna have that issue with binding. And that's really what you're paying for when you're buying the expensive stuff is there's no binding. At $2,000, you better expect no binding. At 160 bucks, there's some binding, but it's the same thing. You get a little bit out of the gate, but once you get over that, it's smooth sailing. It's a very slight bind and it doesn't happen all the time. It's a very specific, unique situation where you'll notice it. The entire tripod can extend out to 73 inches, so it gets pretty tall. I've never taken it that high, but if you're expecting something extreme, you can always weigh it down. The head itself has a pretty unique mechanism that I kind of love and hate. It's able to accept DJI's gimbals, the RS2, I believe, I forget which one, and a standard Manfrotto. And I don't own the DJI gimbals. I don't need one. I have my Ronin 4D, so I always have it on standard. But the way it goes in, you can slide it in and out, but there's a unique way of kind of like putting the plate in and then seating it. And I hate that, especially when you have something really heavy on there, like the Ronin 4D. It's never smooth enough for me, so I just slide it in and out. I like that they included that feature. So if you do have a gimbal, that might be a huge plus for you. So if you are on uneven surfaces, you don't have to adjust the legs. You can just adjust the head, the tilt. There's a level indicator there and you're good to go. And there's small things that Small Rig does, no pun intended, that really just kind of, I don't know, elevates their entire products. For example, in the plate, in the Manfrotto plate, there's a key, there's a Allen key that's magnetically attached. It's there, it's always there. It's with the tripods, with the fluid head. I like that they're always thinking about the user with these really neat things that they just kind of design into their products. That's really cool. I also like the legs. They're lever style legs. You can tighten them if you need to or loosen them up. If you're putting something that's really heavy so you don't get like leg creep. I had some leg creep when I started using the Ronin 4D on it, but then I tightened them back up and they're fine. I haven't had any issues for at least six, seven months since I've tightened it up. So the payload, as far as like a cinema camera, like the Ronin 4D, you're good to go. We talked about the flip locking system for the legs, but you also have the aluminum alloy centerized like stabilizer thing where it keeps all the legs attached in the center. That's really important because you don't want to be fumbling with legs, especially at that weight 
and that height and that bulkiness because it's a heavy tripod. And I'll talk about why that's important with the next tripod that I'm going to recommend, but you want those legs to stay together. Okay, and then finally, the last tripod that I recommend, and this was the tripod that I bought, the first tripod that I bought that was worth a little bit more money. It's made by Newer. It's the 72 inch mono tripod. It comes with a lot of different features. It's really heavy. I think it's made out of aluminum or steel. What I loved about it was it has the ability to actually detach and get converted into like a 90 degree thing. So you can get kind of like overhead shots. Be warned though, you have to really make sure that you weigh the other side down because it will tip over, especially with like a mirrorless camera or a DSLR. But if you're using like a GoPro or something a lot lighter, the overhead shot thing is pretty cool. It comes with a ball head. It's very versatile. It extends up to like 72 inches, something like that. And it was my first real tripod. But if you're looking for something that is light travel kind of, but still can accept heavy duty things, then this newer might be a good middle ground between the two. It's not quite as heavy as the small rig fluid head, but definitely not as light as the small rig travels. So I recommend that you just maybe skip the newer and get either the travel if you need to travel now for YouTube and all that, and then get a heavy duty later on, save your money and get a heavy duty later on. But the thing that I really, really don't like about the newer, the biggest con is the legs don't have a stabilizer. So they're always moving around and bouncing around. You pinch yourself and it's hard to set it up. And then sometimes they slip and they move and it just causes chaos. So just consider that. I really hope this video was informative. Hopefully I suggested some tripods to you guys and avoided some heartache and hopefully gave you at least three good choices to kind of ponder around and maybe make that jump to a better tripod, more professional videos. That's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative and I will catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody.